For those of you that are not in the US and Canada, this is the version of the U7 Pro Outdoor that you'll get. And no, it doesn't include six gigahertz. So what else do you get with it and how well does it perform? So let's take a look. This is what the U7 Pro Outdoor looks like and it looks a little bit different to the U7 Outdoor and we'll cover that a little bit later in this video. We have the heat sink on the back. We have the two antennas at the top that sit in right here. Again, we'll have a look at how to install that shortly. And it has the two and a half gig uplink on the back right here. The other things you get inside the box, the bracket is a little bit different. So you can either pole mount this or wall mount this and you have the flexibility to turn it that way and up and down this way. So you have two different ways you can set this to the right angle. We have the Jubilee clips for the pole mounts right here. We have a whole bunch of screws to make sure it's all connected tightly and it's not gonna go anywhere. We have the omnidirectional antennas should you wish to install these. And then if you want to make it fully IP67 rated, you have a cable gland right here to feed your cable straight into. And if your cable is a little bit slimmer, there's a cable grommet here as well. Inside we have a card that comes with as well, and this shows the 90 degree 2.4 and five gigahertz in the directional pattern. If you use the omnidirectional antenna and the U7 Pro Outdoor itself, this is the kind of signal pattern that you get. A big thank you to today's sponsor, MS Dist, a name you can trust in networking since 2002. In fact, they were the first to bring ubiquity to the UK back in 2008, setting a high standard for quality networking gear. MS Disk makes it easy to find exactly what you need without the hassle, offering a carefully selected range of wireless networking and security products. They offer competitive prices and special pricing for their trade customers. Need help picking the right gear? Their team of experienced networking pros are always on hand to offer help, advice and technical support. And when you order before 4.30pm, they've got your back with fast, reliable next day shipping across most of the UK. With a strong focus on customer satisfaction, MS Dist has built a reputation for quality products, quick delivery, and top-notch service. Whether you're upgrading your home setup or rolling out a business network, they have got you covered. Check out the pinned comment and the description for your latest promo code for MS Dist. Check them out today and see why so many people trust MS Dist for their networking needs. You can register your interest now with the links down below when the products become available. What are some of the differences between the US version and the worldwide version? And you can see that on the table right here. The price of the US version is $299 and the worldwide version is either 264 pounds or 300 euros, depending on where you are. Wi-Fi 7 with six gigahertz and versus Wi-Fi 7 without six gigahertz. Both 2.5 gigabit uplinks, both six spatial streams, 300 plus connected devices. And this right here is where the difference happens. So the MIMO for the U7 Pro Outdoor US version is two by two on all the 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz range. The U7 Pro Outdoor is 2x2 on the 2.4 and 4x4 on the 5 gigahertz. The power method is all PoE plus and in terms of weatherproofing they're both IPX6 rated but if you use the weather gland as I showed you you can get it to IP67 rated. For the radio pattern I showed you earlier the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz on the card but for my friends that have the US version the 6 gigahertz is only directional. For those of you that are probably wondering well why do the rest of the world not have 6 gigahertz? Well, that's down to the fact that the bodies locally within your country have not approved the usage of six gigahertz outdoor yet. There are some strides for people that are in the UK. Hopefully Ofcom are gonna be approving something like this soon. It might be late this year, early next year, but it could be a little while before we see six gigahertz being able to use outdoor. You can check with your local regulatory board to see when they might be looking to approve six gigahertz to be used outdoor. That doesn't necessarily mean that it will be available on these devices. It just means it's been approved and maybe in a future update of a new version, we may see six gigahertz outdoor. To get the U7 Pro outdoor mounted, it's very simple and easy. There's four screws that fix onto the back or there's some pole straps as well that we saw in the unboxing. So that can be fitted on as well. We then go ahead and pop that on just like so. So you can see that sits flushly just there. And then there's a little screw that sits in the top just here and we can screw that straight in. So that is the screw right there for those that want to see. And there's an Allen key inside the box that we need to tighten this and this depending on what direction you want to sit it. So we have tilt up and down, and then we have the tilt side to side. So we can tighten them up accordingly. And then we can see at the front, this has already been adopted and powered and ready to go. There we go. And that's now installed and placed in the right direction that we're going to be. And if we scroll the other way, we're going to have a little look. So we're going to test about here, which is about five meters, down the back down there, which is about 25 meters. And then the other side of the road, which is about 40 to 45 meters away. We'll test that in both the directional and omnidirectional mic, 
but first let's look at the configuration. For the settings on the U7 Pro Outdoor, there isn't really a lot more different than you see in other access points. You have all the information on here and you look in the air view if you wish to do so. You can see all the statistics in here. Then we can see at the bottom down here what channels are being used and the width, so 2x2 and 4x4 for the MIMO, Wi-Fi 7. And then we can take a look at the insights and we can see some more information here. And then the settings. The big one is going to be the antenna type. So are you using the omnidirectional or are you using the built-in antenna? Also, you have the indoor-outdoor setting. If you are using the outdoor, you may want to make sure you will have ticked it to make sure you're in compliance with regulations for using five gigahertz outdoor. Then you can tweak all of the settings down here for the 2.4 and the five gigahertz radios. I've seen some people ask in the past whether you can actually set this up via meshing. Yeah, you can have it as a parent or you can use it as a mesh connect. And then we have everything down here from load configuration to device replacement, locate, restart, disable, and remove. Because then it will then. Here's a quick tip for those of you that are looking to mount and dismount this device. When you go ahead and pop this on, you can get it mounted quite easily by popping that screw in. When you do take it off, do make sure you have one hand on the access point and not like me, as then this will then drop and it will fall down and could possibly break. Just showing you on the screen right now, we have the 2.4 and five gigahertz there. So we'll start with the five gigahertz and we're gonna do a couple of tests. First, we'll take a look at the Wi-Fi man and then we're gonna take a look at the open speed test, which is connected back to my machine at the house. So we'll run a throughput test and we'll see what sort of signal we're getting between the two. First, we'll start with the Wi-Fi man test. So let's start with the signal test. So we're at the first point, which is about five meters ish away. So we're gonna go all the way up to the back down there at this point. And we can see the signal minus 40 dBm. It's fairly strong in terms of the throughput. We're getting around 700 megabits per second. So not bad for an outdoor access point with five gigahertz. For the open speed test, I'm connecting through the access point, through to my switch and then to my Mac. So we can click start just here. We are on the same network as we would be on the Mac. So we're getting around again, so five, 600 megabits per second in terms of download speed and then around 600 again megabits per second in terms of upload speed. So now I'm gonna flash the results up on the screen. So we've done five meters. We're gonna go and do 25 meters and then 40 meters. That was the first test and let's take a look at all the results together. So we have the directional and omnidirectional results for the five gigahertz. Now I was running this at 80 megahertz in terms of width and auto in terms of power. And there was three different tests that we were running as you saw, the Wi-Fi man throughput, the Wi-Fi man signal strength and an open speed test coming back to my desktop machine right here. If you wanna pause at any point and have a look at some of the results, you can feel free to do that. Having a quick look through the omnidirectional and the directional pattern is giving you a similar sort of throughput. Now it's worth noting with the five gigahertz as I showed you on the card at the start, when you have the antenna set up as well, you'll get both the directional and the omnidirectional pattern, which is why you're probably seeing some of the results being very similar. Just like I say in every video, the Wi-Fi testing is very subjective. There is anything that can change the results of this within an instant, but this is a rough idea as to what I was getting at the time of this recording. When you set this up at home, you may get something better, you may get something less, but that is down to the interference and anything else in your area that may be impacting your Wi-Fi. If we move to the 2.4 gigahertz range, you can see at the five and 25 meters, we were getting fairly similar results but when we got to the 40 meter mark the omnidirectional was falling a little bit and that's purely because of the directional antenna that's sending out the 5 gigahertz but it doesn't send out 2.4 gigahertz as well that only works on the omnidirectional ones again if you want to take a look at any of these results in a little bit more detail hit pause right now and you can have a little look and analyze them a little bit further for those of you that are probably debating between the u7 pro outdoor and the u7 outdoor here's a quick look at some of the specification differences between the two and I've, again i've included the us version as well for those of you that are watching from there that might be interested in that model there's the results on here so the price difference is an $80 jump so $199 for the outdoor version and $279 for the US version and then 264 pounds and 300 euros for the worldwide version there they're all 2.5 gigabit they're all Wi-Fi 7 with the US version having 6 gigahertz there's four spatial streams on the outdoor versus six and it allows up to 50 more connected devices in terms of the MIMO for the U7 outdoor and the U7 Pro outdoor US version it's the same but we have a 4x4 antenna for the worldwide version as well in terms of the directional pattern between the two so we saw on the US version and I'll pop this up on the screen right now you'll see the 6 gigahertz in the 90 degree range for the directional antenna but when you look at the U7 outdoor version there's a slight difference in the 2.4 gigahertz there's a slight difference in the 2.4 gigahertz you'll see on the directional antenna, it's a 45 degree for the five gigahertz and 90 degree for 2.4 gigahertz. But on the U7 Pro Outdoor, you'll see it's full 90 degrees for both 
spectrums. For the physical look, they look pretty much the same. There's a little notch on the back of this one. They're both fairly weighty because of the heat sink on the back. They both have the 2.5 gigabit uplink. For the mounting options, we have this, which clips into the back here. And for those that have been asking in previous videos about how you get this unclipped, you literally just have to use a bit of force and push it up once it's mounted or pull it down, depending on how you're willing to take it off. For the U7 Pro Outdoor, there's this kind of mount that comes on here and that just literally sits in here and there's a screw at the top. And then we have the cable gland, which you can take this off and undo the screw there. And you can pop this cable gland in here and there's some screws that come inside the box. For the antennas on the U7 Outdoor, these are movable to set them in the right direction of how you want the pattern to go. And for this one, they are fixed. They just sit on top of your access point. If you wanna see the results of the U7 Outdoor, I'll leave that video down in the description below and then you can compare the results between the two. I would have done a similar sort of test with the directional and omnidirectional patterns. If there's anything more you wanna see on these devices, let me know down in the comments and maybe I can throw them in in a future video. Let me know your thoughts. Would you upgrade from the U7 Outdoor to the U7 Pro Outdoor? Or if you had a choice between the two, which one would you buy? For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.